Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to look at some practice questions for acid-base equilibrium. In previous videos, we looked at how to rank acids and bases not using pKa values, but instead using the mnemonic CARIO, which as a reminder, stands for C is charge, A is atom, R is resonance, I is induction or the inductive effect, and O is orbital hybridization. For in-depth karyo tutorials, make sure you watch this series first before trying these practice problems, and you can find them on my website along with the acid-base practice quiz and cheat sheet by going to layerforsci.com slash acid-base. Assuming you've mastered it, let's apply this to questions where you're not told specifically here are two molecules which is stronger, but instead you're provided with a reaction at equilibrium and asked to determine if the reaction favors the right or the left, meaning does it favor products or reactants. Say so you're faced with a problem like this, and you're asked to determine if equilibrium will lie to the right or the left, meaning does equilibrium favor the products or the reactants. Remember that in an equilibrium question, or any sort of reaction, you always want to think back to the mnemonic of happy, stable, unreactive. That means for a molecule that is relatively stable, it's feeling relatively happy and doesn't want to react. But if a molecule is unstable, it's very unhappy and wants to react. When trying to determine the direction of equilibrium, we want to see if the molecules on the right or left are more stable and choose the more stable side. Since this is an acid-base question, we're going to use the mnemonic CARIO to help us break it down. But first, let's pair up what's reacting to identify the acids and bases so we have what to compare. NH4CO goes to NH3. KOH goes to H2O. But wait a minute. Where does this come from? Anytime you see a molecule where Cl is just sitting at the end rather than attached with a bond, recognize that it's a negative spectator ion. It doesn't do anything. It's dissolved in solution, but it's simply there to balance the charge of, in this case, ammonium plus one. KCl is simply that same salt where potassium chloride is floating around in solution. Same thing with a group 1 metal in the beginning of a molecule, such as K in front of OH. That's a K plus positive spectator ion to balance the negative charge on OH minus, which is simply OH minus in solution. The next thing we want to do is identify the acids and bases using the trick I teach in the first video of this series, where the acid is the more positive species and the base is the more negative. If we're looking at ammonium and ammonia, ammonium with a charge of plus one is more positive, making this the acid. Ammonia with a charge of zero is more negative than positive one, making it the conjugate base. Hydroxide is negative one and H2O is neutral. Negative one is more negative than zero, making hydroxide the base. Zero is more positive the negative one, making water the conjugate acid. Now that we know what's reacting, let's use cario, starting with C, which is charge. The net charge on either side of the reaction is zero. So what do we do? We're not looking for the net, we're looking for the individual molecules. If we compare ammonium to ammonia, ammonium is positive. It's carrying a positive burden of charge. Ammonia is neutral, it's more happy. This tells me equilibrium is probably gonna favor the right where I have a neutral ammonia, but if you're not sure yet, let's look at hydroxide and water. Hydroxide is negative one, it's carrying a negative burden of charge, and water is zero, once again, more happy, more stable than its negative counterpart, justifying again that equilibrium in this case will favor the right. Ready to try another one? Pause the video, see what you come up with, then let's break it down. We're asked to find if equilibrium is going to favor the right or the left in this acid-base reaction. So let's use the mnemonic CARIO, but first identify the species. NaOCH3 goes to CH3OH, NH3 goes to NaNH2. Let's get rid of our spectators. Positive Na is simply there to balance the OCH3 minus. Positive Na 
is simply here to balance the NH2 minus. What are our acids and bases? CH3O minus is negative, which is more negative than its neutral CH3OH counterpart, making sodium methoxide the base and methanol the conjugate acid. Ammonia is neutral, which is more positive than its NH2 minus counterpart, making ammonia the acid and amide the conjugate base. Let's go to karyo, starting with charge. In this case, we have a negative base on either side, and we have a neutral acid on either side. So we can't use charge for the comparison. Given that each side has a negative and a neutral, we need to compare the base to the base or the acid to the acid to see which is most stable. I personally like to compare the charged molecules because then we can ask the question, which one is more capable of holding that charge? We're comparing OCH3- to NH2-, having already determined that they're both negative. Charge doesn't help us. So let's move on to A, which is atom, specifically the atom holding the charge. In methoxide, we have a negative oxygen. In amide, we have a negative nitrogen. We have different atoms, but what does this tell us? Don't forget the 10 atoms on the periodic table that I asked you to memorize, and that is HCNOF, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. It helps us in this case, because if we remember the trend for electronegativity, which is up and towards the right, we can see that oxygen is towards the right of nitrogen, making oxygen more electronegative, and therefore more capable of holding the charge. If oxygen is more capable of holding the charge, it is happier to hold the charge, and therefore it's more stable holding the charge, giving us a reaction where equilibrium favors the side that has a negative oxygen, rather than the less stable, more unhappy negative nitrogen. For this problem, once again, see if you can figure out if equilibrium will favor the right or the left. Pause the video and give it a try. What do we have? We're going to use the mnemonic karyo, but first, let's pair things up. Even though the molecules all look kind of the same, we have one ring with bonds in it and one ring with no bonds in it, so let's pair those up. The aromatic ring and the non-aromatic ring. Next, let's find the acids and bases. The aromatic ring, meaning the one that looks like benzene with nitrogen on it, is neutral on the left and negative on the right. Neutral is more positive than minus one, making this the acid, and here we have the conjugate base. The non-aromatic ring, meaning no pi bonds in the ring, has a negative on the left and neutral on the right. The more negative is going to be the base, and the less negative or more positive will be our conjugate acid. Once again, we have a situation where there's a negative in the reactant side and the product side. So let's see if we can compare either both acids or both bases. I'd like to compare both bases. Which one is going to be more stable using the karyo mnemonic? We'll start with C. Both nitrogens are attached to a six-membered ring have one hydrogen atom and a charge of negative one. Can't use charge if they're the same. Next, we look at the atom, but we already said it's nitrogen versus nitrogen. Can't use the atom. Next, we'll use resonance. And this is where we want to see if the negative nitrogen is stuck carrying the burden of charge by itself, or if it's able to resonate that charge, meaning to share that charge with other atoms. The non-aromatic nitrogen, the one with no pi bonds, is sitting on an sp3 hybridized carbon. Remember the rule that I teach in my resonance series. You cannot resonate onto an sp3 carbon because even though it appears to have only three bonds, there's a fourth bond to hydrogen, a hidden hydrogen, which means if you try to resonate, you're going to create a fifth bond, violate the octet rule, and that just can't happen. That means the molecule on the left has no resonance. The molecule on the right is attached to an sp2 hybridized carbon. That sp2 carbon has a pi bond, which can be kicked 
off of that carbon and actually resonated around the ring. In fact, I challenge you to pause the video and draw out all four resonance structures for this molecule here. Once you do, you'll see that this molecule has a total of four resonance structures, meaning nitrogen can share that negative charge with three other atoms, definitely reducing the burden because it's not one atom holding the charge, it's four. And when that burden on nitrogen is reduced due to resonance, nitrogen is happier, nitrogen is more stable, and therefore less reactive. That means this reaction is going to favor the side that has a negative charge on the nitrogen with resonance rather than the reactants which has a negative charge on nitrogen with no resonance. For even more practice problems on organic chemistry acid-base reactions, first give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you visit my website for the acid-base tutorial series, practice quiz, and cheat sheet, layerforsci.com slash acid-base.